This video is part two of autonomous differential equations and population dynamics. In the first video, we talked about first order autonomous differential equations, which have the form dy dt is equal to f of y. Our first example of that was of exponential growth, where dy dt is equal to r, a constant, times y. And the idea of this is that growth of a population, or the rate of change of y, is proportional to the current value of y. And r is called the growth rate or growth decline. And when we solve this equation, we, and we can solve this explicitly because this is um, our first order linear equation, and we get y is equal to y naught e to the rt. And this model predicts the population will grow exponentially for all time. However, it's clear such ideal conditions cannot continue indefinitely because eventually there'll be a limitation on resources that will reduce the growth rate and bring an end to uninhibited exponential growth. A modification of exponential growth was the logistic growth, which we also covered in the last video. And that equation was dy dt is equal to h of y times y. So again, it's a lot like the exponential growth, but instead of just a constant r, we have a function h of y. And we choose h of y to be equal to r minus a y. And what you'll see is that when y is very small, h of y behaves like r with your uninhibited, your natural growth rate, your intrinsic growth rate. As y gets larger, h of y gets smaller, and eventually, as y gets very large, h of y will become negative, so it will slow down the population growth. So a is a positive constant. Here we have dy dt is equal to, and substituting for h, r minus a y times y. And then we often put this form into another form where we have dy dt is equal to r, 1 minus y over k where k is r over a, and we put it in this form with a k because k has a meaning. It is called the saturation point. In other words, that's kind of the maximum that a population will grow to, assuming that the population starts out with some population less than k. So the growth rate still depends on population r, but is replaced by a function. And as we said, hy is approximately equal to r when y is small, hy decreases as y grows larger, and hy is negative when y is sufficiently large. And then in our last video, we did qualitative uh, sketches of the solution of the logistic growth. The exponential was quite simple because we could solve the equation simply, we could graph it. But for logistic growth, we wanted to do a sketch of the solution without actually solving the differential equation. So we're going to learn how to sketch the solution of the differential equation without solving it. And we did these five steps to do it. First, we drew a graph of y versus f of y. And you want to remember f of y is dy dt. So this is not a graph of y. It's actually a graph of dy dt and how it depends on y. Then we uh, looked at equilibrium or constant solutions. So the equilibrium solutions correspond to where there's no change or variation in the value of y as t increases. In other words, dy dt is equal to 0. The zeros of f of y are also called critical points. And then we looked at the derivative dy dt to determine where y is increasing and where y is decreasing. And we drew arrows on a phase line. Uh, with rightward arrows indicating an increasing function and leftward to increase, uh, indicate a decreasing function. And then we considered the second derivative, d2y dt, to determine concavity of our solution. And the graph we found is concave up when f and f prime have the same sign and concave down when f and f prime have different signs. And the way we derived that is we looked at this second um, second derivative, d2y over dt squared, and that's just the derivative of the first derivative. So it's d dt of dy dt, but dy dt, remember, is equal to f of y. And now when you do take the derivative of f of y with respect to t, because f is, I mean, because y is a function of t, so the derivative will be f prime of y times dy dt by the chain rule. But this here, again, dy dt is just f of y, so that's equal to f prime of y 
times f of y. Again, this is the second derivative. So the second derivative is positive when f of y and f prime of y have the same sign, and then it's concave up. The second derivative is negative when f prime of y and f y have different signs, and then it'll be concave down. And last, we used all this information that we gathered to draw the phase line on a new graph, and then we graphed y, uh, we graphed uh, y versus t. So other than graphing solutions, the other big topic of this chapter are the four different models of population growth. That's exponential growth, logistic growth, critical threshold, and logistic growth with a threshold. So in the last video, and also we did a quick review in this video of exponential growth and logistic growth. So the remainder of this video, we'll talk about critical, the critical threshold model and the logistic growth with the threshold. And the critical threshold model was the idea that we looked at logistic growth and then we put a minus sign. Here's our logistic growth equation over here. And we put a minus sign in front, and that gives us solutions of a very different form. And in fact, what we have, instead of k, we put a t. t becomes a threshold level below with which growth does not occur. So in this model, y either approaches 0 or grows without bound, depending on whether y0 is less than or greater than t. So in other words, the idea is we need a threshold um, number in the population. So the population needs to exceed some threshold before the population can grow. And then, because now we still have um, uninhibited growth, once we've crossed the threshold, we have a logistic growth with threshold, which will give us um, a modification so that unbounded growth does not occur when y is above threshold t. So if y starts below the threshold, then y declines to extinction. On the other hand, if y starts above t, then y eventually approaches the saturation or carrying capacity k that we had in logistic growth. And in our last video, we talked about asymptotically stable solutions as well as unstable equilibrium solutions. So an asymptotically stable equilibrium is one where values close to the equilibrium will be attracted, and then they get trapped by the equilibrium solution and cannot move away. For an unstable equilibrium solution, even solutions that start very near the equilibrium will tend to move away. So the only way to guarantee the solution will remain at an unstable equilibrium is to start exactly at the equilibrium. So in this video, we'll go ahead and discuss critical threshold and logistic growth model with a threshold. To get to the critical threshold model, we start with the logistic growth model, which was dy dt is equal to h of y times y, where h of y is equal to r minus a y. So our, our differential equation becomes dy dt equals r minus a y times y. Then what we do is we substitute k equals r over a, so we get dy dt is equal to r times 1 minus y over k, where k is our saturation value. So this is logistic growth. This is the equation. So we're going to consider what happens when we change this r to a minus r. And again, um, this gives us very different behavior for solutions. And we are going to start analyzing this by doing a qualitative sketch of the solution. So our first step is to draw a graph of y versus f of y. And again, f of y is dy dt. So this is a graph of dy dt. And much like the logistic model, you can see that this equation is a parabola, and we have the vertex is at t over 2 and minus r t over 4. So you can work this out, or this is something you can note. And then we can look at our, the next thing we could do is look at our critical points or our equilibrium points. Those correspond to points where there's no change or variation in the value of y as t increases. That is, that's where dy dt equals 0. And again, the zeros of this of f of y are called critical points, so we'll look for those. dy dt is equal to minus r times 1 minus y over t times y equals 0. So for this product to be equal to 0, one of these uh, things that you multiply by must be equal to 0. So either 1 minus y over t equals 0 or y equals 0 which gives us y equals 0 or y equals t. 
So our equilibrium solutions, that's where there's no, um, no change, is equal to phi 1 of t is equal to 0, and phi 2 of t is equal to t. Our next step is to consider dy dt to determine where y is increasing and where y is decreasing. And remember, our graph here is not a graph of y. It's a graph of dy dt. So here, y is not increasing, and then here, y is not decreasing. This is where dy dt is decreasing, and dy dt is increasing. But what we can see from this graph of dy dt is from y equals 0 to y equals t, this whole time, the derivative is negative, which means that y is decreasing. So we have that written here. For y between 0 and t, dy dt is, is less than 0, and y is positive, but it's also decreasing as t increases. On the other hand, as y um, is larger than t, now f of y is positive, so the derivative is positive, so that must mean y is increasing. So for y greater than t, dy dt is greater than 0, so y is positive and increasing as t increases. In order to indicate on our graph where y is increasing or decreasing, we use these arrows along the y-axis. So between 0 and t, y is decreasing, so we make these arrows point leftward. For, t, uh, for y greater than t, y is increasing, so we're going to point the arrows towards the right. To determine if our equilibrium solutions are asymptotically stable, we look at each uh, starting initial condition, y not, greater than 0, and it's asymptotically stable if the solution approaches the equilibrium so solution asymptotically as t approaches infinity. Here, for both of our equilibrium solutions, which I have with these red dots here at 0 and t, um, you can see that it is not the case for every initial value that the solution will approach the equilibrium solution, right? Because here, it's, it'll start approaching 0, but you have to be less than t, whereas over here, you're going to grow unbounded. So neither of these are asymptotically stable. Our next step is to consider the second derivative to determine concavity. And remember, d2y dt squared is equal to the derivative of the first derivative. So to get the second derivative, you take the first derivative and then you take another derivative. But this dy dt is equal to f of y. And then, so what we have is d dt of f of y now, the derivative of f of y is f prime of y, and by the chain rule, because y is a function of t, we have to multiply by dy dt, and this gives us f prime of y, and dy dt again is equal to f of y. So our second derivative is positive if these two functions, the derivative and f of y, are both have the same sign, and the second derivative is negative if these two functions have different signs. So looking at the different intervals between 0 and t, you can see f of y is negative. Actually, it's negative between 0 and y, but f of y is negative. But the derivative, right, if you look at a tangent line here, it's also negative. So here, y um, is concave up. Then looking at the interval between t over 2 to t. Again, f of y is still negative, but the derivative, if you draw a tangent line, is positive, so y is concave down. And then last, for y greater than t, here we have f of y is positive, and also the, the derivative is also positive, so y is going to be concave up. So our inflection points are going to be at t over 2 and at t because that's where we change from concave up to concave down and vice versa. And now we are ready to draw the phase line. So we're going to take this line here, the y-axis, which uh, points out the y equals 0 and y equals t as critical points or equilibrium solutions. And then we have these arrows to indicate where y is increasing and decreasing. And again, the phase line is often when we draw our graph of t versus y it's going to be along the y-axis because it is the y-axis. We're going to draw it vertically. 
Here I am ready to draw the graph t versus y or y versus t and I put my phase line in, in line with my y-axis since my phase line is the y-axis and this reminds me that between 0 and t my function is decreasing and here between t and infinity my function is increasing. Then I also have my uh, equilibrium solutions drawn out in red. And I added this note about the equilibrium curves, and it's something you might want to add in your steps for drawing a qualitative sketch. I used the information that I have over here that between 0 and t, that y is decreasing. So between 0 and t, all of these functions are decreasing. And then once we are greater than t, y is increasing. So here, for y greater than t, we have y increasing. And then I throw in my concavity to help me between 0 and t over 2, y is concave up between here and t over 2. So now we're concave up as we're decreasing. And then between t over 2 and t, we're concave down. So here I have a solution that starts at this initial value here, whatever this value y is. And it's above t over 2, so it's concave down and it's decreasing, but as soon as I cross over to t over 2, I need to start going concave up. Again, here's another solution at another initial value, and it's greater than t over 2, so it's concave down, but the moment it crosses over here, crosses over to t over 2, it starts to become concave up. And one more initial value, it's concave down, crosses t over 2, and it's concave up. And then for y greater than t, it's concave up. So here I have y greater than t, and they are simply concave up. So what you will notice from this graph, and it's the point of our critical threshold, t is our critical threshold, and it's in the equation, where is our equation? Over here. So here's our equation, here's our t. So t is where if our initial values, and here we have 1, 2, 3, for five initial values, so uh, initial condition one, two, three, four, five. So if the initial condition or the initial value is below t, you can see that the growth decays down till eventually um, we'll get to zero. Whereas if the population is above t, you see that we'll have this exponential growth. And that is summarized here. So t is a threshold level below which growth does not occur. And now that we've done this qualitative sketch, and remember we've done this without even solving the differential equation, but I did go ahead and solve the, uh, oh, actually, to solve this differential equation, and I could have, it is separable, and I could have done the separation and then done the calculation. However, I can also notice the logistic equation has this solution here. So if I replace k, with t, and I replace r with negative r, I can borrow this solution and get my solution for the critical threshold model. And then from our solution that we calculated, we can confirm what our graph shows. And our logistic growth with the threshold is a modification to the threshold model so that the unbounded growth does not occur when y is above the threshold. So our equation is dy dt is equal to minus r times 1 minus y over t times 1 minus y over k times y. And we'll look at doing a qualitative sketch of this solution. So we'll start with drawing a graph of y versus dy dt which here, it's a cubic equation. And looking at my critical points where dy dt is equal to 0, and I set all of this equal to 0. I get this from my dy dt equation. So since the product is equal to 0, that means either 1 minus y over t is 0, or 1 minus y over k is 0, or y is 0. If this is 0, then that means y is equal to t. If this factor is 0, that means y is equal to k. And if y is equal to 0, then y is equal to 0. So we have three zeros, 0, t, and k. And we know it's a cubic equation. 
Our next step, actually we've already done the equilibrium or constant solutions here when we set dy dt equals zero. So our next step is to consider dy dt to determine where y is increasing and where y is decreasing. So I don't know why I did it in this order, but let's say y is less than t. You can see that f of y is negative here, which means that if the derivative is negative, that means that y of t is, oh, I'm over here, y of t is decreasing. Now as we go between t and k, we can see f of y is positive now, which means y is increasing, and then when y is greater than k, now we're back down in negative territory, so that means y is decreasing. And I want to incorporate this information on this graph, so along the axis I draw for y between 0 and t, these uh, negative pointing arrows. For y between t and k, I have positive pointing arrows to indicate it's increasing. And then for y greater than k, again, I have negative, so it's decreasing arrows. And looking from this graph, here we have arrows pointing towards 0. And here, when we're near k, when we're near our equilibrium point, we have um, our solutions going towards k. Whereas over here, this equilibrium point, our solutions are kind of escaping. So that means t is an, un an asymptotically unstable solution, whereas 0 and k are asymptotically stable. Our next step is to consider d2y dt squared, the second derivative, to determine concavity. And remember, if f and f prime have the same sign, then it's concave up because the second derivative is positive. So looking between uh, y between, oh, and here, between 0 and y over 2, so we have f of y is negative, and f prime of y, we can see the uh, slope is negative, which means it's concave up. Now between y2 and t over here, again we have f of y is negative, but we have the slope going up, so now it's concave down. Between t and y1, now actually from here to here we have f of y is positive, and here our derivative is positive, so we're going to have concave up. Between y1 and k, now again we have positive y, but a, sl a downward sloping a downward slope, so the derivative is negative, so we're uh, concave down. And then last here, we're negative in f of y, and our slope is negative, so we're concave up. Drawing our graph now between 0 and t, we're going to be decreasing. Between t and k, we're going to be increasing, and be anything greater than k, we're going to be decreasing. And I'm just getting those from my arrows from the arrows on my phase line over here, but now I'm going to add concavity. So we're going to start with concave up over here. So here I'm concave up. But the moment I get an initial value or anything greater than y2, I'm concave down. But the moment I cross over to y2 again, I'm concave up. So here I have another point that starts before t. It's concave down, but the moment I cross over y2, I'm concave up. And now, between t and y1, where's t and y1 here, I'm going to be concave up. So these are also increasing, so I'm concave up. But by the time I get to y1 and k, I need to go concave down. So again, I start here at some initial value um, that's greater than t. Where, which one am I doing? Here greater than t and less than y1, so I'm here. So I want to be concave up. But the moment I hit y1, I'm going to go concave down because now I'm between y1 and k. So that's my concave down. Here, I start greater than y1 and less than k. So I'm uh, positive, I'm increasing, but I'm concave down, so this is concave down. Here's another point, another initial value that's between k, y1 and k, so I'm increasing but I'm concave down. And then last, for everything greater than k, I'm going to be concave up again but I'm still decreasing. 
So this is my graph. And here we have the characteristic of logistic growth with the threshold. We see that if y star starts below the threshold t, so these are these three initial values, then y declines to ultimate extinction. It starts climbing down to zero. On the other hand, if y starts above t, then y eventually approaches the saturation or the carrying capacity k. So here we have one, two, three, four, five, six um, initial values that start above t, and you can see they all kind of converge to k. The inflection points on the graph of y versus t correspond to the max and minimum points y1 and y2. And these values can be obtained by differentiating the right-hand side of the logistic growth with threshold equation with respect to y, setting the result to 0 and solving for y. We then obtain y1, 2, and we have the equation for the inflection points right here. So this video was part two of Autonomous Differential Equations of Population Dynamics, and I just realized something in my steps. Our last step is to draw y versus t, and I had that wrong in my previous video, so I'm telling you now that the last one is y versus t, but you also saw my graphs that they had t here and y over here, so hopefully you were okay with that video. But what we covered was the definition of autonomous differential equations, which have the form dy dt equals f of y. We started with the simplest, which is dy dt equals a simple um, constant times y, which meant the rate of change of y is proportional to the current value of y. We could solve that explicitly, and we got, um, this is just a linear equation, so we got y equals y naught e to the rt. And this model predicts um, exponential growth. Then we looked at log logistic growth, was a variation on exponential growth, and we basically replaced r with a function h of y, and h of y is equal to r minus a y. And this h of y had the effect of when y was small, essentially h of y was equal to r. So very much like the exponential growth with r being the intrinsic rate of growth. When, as y got larger, r got smaller, until eventually when y was very large, h would be negative, and so you'd have a population decline. We talked about how to sketch graphs um, of the solution y of t, and we sketched the solution of the differential equation without actually solving the differential equation, and we followed these steps here. And then most, the rest of our video uh, was concerned with exponential growth and logistic growth, which was covered in detail in the previous uh, video and overviewed in this. And then we talked about the critical threshold model, which was a variation on the logistic growth. But here, the minus sign in front of the R, so it's essentially the same, except with the minus sign, and the K here is replaced with the T, gives us um, a very different model which this t is considered a threshold level. So if our initial population is less than the threshold, then growth will not occur. And in fact, uh, whatever population will uh, decline until it's extinct. And if, but if the initial threshold, our uh, initial population, sorry, if our initial population is ab um, above t, then um, we will have uh, our general exponential growth without bound. And the last, we looked at logistic growth with the threshold, which had this model here. And so we still had a threshold level that we had to exceed in order to avoid population decline. But once we have an initial condition above t, what would happen is y would then eventually approach our saturation, our carrying capacity, k. And that was pretty much it for this video. Thank you for watching.